So my thing and how I work my spirituality is that um, well it can be said in many ways. In truth all that I seem to be is a reflection of a level of consciousness. There is no such thing as Sabir. What, what, well, you could say there are certain belief systems which are being, uh, being held at the level of identity, but really what comes out of my mouth and what words uh, are said are just uh, a mirror of a level of consciousness. So on certain days it can be like my ego's not there and something's speaking. Um, and the words seem to be very, very wise and, and good. And then, some, and then sometimes, in some periods of my life, there seems to be a lot of ego tracking. And then it's like, uh, uh, and then it's like what comes out of this mouth uh, is just a reflection of a very low level of vibration, a low vibrational level. It's like, uh, you know, there was no Course in Miracles done for a while, there was no Hawkins watch for a while, I hadn't been, there was no 12-step group, there was no forgiveness work. Suddenly, like the level of consciousness that this entity is at, suddenly drops for a period of time, and then suddenly, because there's no, see, when when there's less ego tracking, one is more a reflection of, of a more infinite field of light, and so the words that emanate out are just uh, coming out of the infinite, and then sometimes when the ego starts to be tracked, the level, the vibration of this entity is reduced. So darker words and more dualistic words and more limited ideas seem to be coming out of this mouth. And this mouth isn't really, really true, but it's just like a, what's coming out of the mouth on any single day, at any single time, it's just a reflection of if there's no ego, there's lots of ego, there's moderate ego there. So it's how much of uh, one is being a channel of the infinite. So it would be like if, if there was no 12-step groups, no Course in Miracles, no observing, none of that done, gradually there'll be more and more of an ego that's here uh, for this entity. And the words that come out of this mouth would be just a reflection of a lower vibration, for a vibrational field. You know, and it'll be just saying lots of drama, and lots of words, and lots of resentments, and lots of fears, and lots of problems. Uh, and then if, it, if, it, if no spiritual work goes on for a long enough period of time, then it's like one is totally disconnected from the light. And that light is like, um, in the infinite, it's like, it literally is like a light bulb. Like being connected to the infinite, it's like there's no ego there, no thoughts can exist, it's just the infinite. And words are said and no one's speaking the words. So, but then when the ego's tracked, there's a me, and there's thinking, and there's darkness, and there's resentments, and there's fears, and there's judgments, and there's all kinds of things. And the words that come out of the mouth are totally different. And then if I get too much into the, into the ego story stuff, then what happens is like the vulnerability to a belief system within the identity, which there's no vulnerability when the light's very intense. Even those belief systems that seem to be there are not, can't express too much light. But once there's enough ego there, it's like one of those dark belief systems can get triggered. You know, it's like someone's trying to steal my donuts. How dare they take my donuts? You know, I'm going to kill them. I'm going to murder them. You know, and then it's like that thing. They stole my <laughs> they stole my donuts. You know, and it, and it takes you down to a very dark vibration. It's like you, you've now totally cut off from the light, and you're now a reflection of something really dark and horrific. You know, it'd be like, and then it'd be like, Sabia's caught on video with a knife trying to chase someone down, running away with a donut, you know. It's like, I thought he was a spiritual guy. It's like, on that, it's like I've tuned in to something very, you know, into the dark realms. And now I'm a reflection of, of something demonic, almost. So, hence the thing. And, and, and uh, and it's a thing, which is why I, I think, you know, commitment to spiritual work, not holding on to resentments, to forgiving, to seeing things differently, commitment to meeting, to having holy company on a regular basis, to have the highest vibration and the highest teachings, and be surrounded by the highest friends at all times, is something, because, you know, once the ego starts tracking, you're going down the levels of, of consciousness, and if you go down low enough, you know, uh, like as you get into the angelic fields where all your friends are angels trying to pull you up into the light and, 
help you stop your resentments and judgments and fears, then that's like a virtuous circle holding you to the light. But if you get disconnected enough, you're going down the realms. And as you get into darker realms where you don't have compadres and friends and, and books and teachers that are holding you to those higher vibrations, then you get, in the darker levels, it's, it's, every level of consciousness is like a battle. Are you going to go up to the next higher level of light? Or are you going to get those people that are going to try and grab you down to the, to the lower level of darkness? You know? So if you go to a 12-step group, like, you know, 90% of the group might tell you to let go of your resentments. 5% of the people might say, harbour your resentment and kill the, kill the, but kill the whatever. So, you know, you're trying to tune into the light, to be a reflection of the infinite, to be in the timeless, to be a channel of love. But as you get to those darker fields, then there'll be those entities in the environment which will try and pull you down to those darker fields. Or even the darker fields will try and have their influence to pull you into deep resentment, deep revenge, deep thoughts of murder, you know, all the dark stuff, you know, um, uh, revenge, murder, vengeance, all of that stuff, getting even, uh, proving, them, proving other people to be wrong, that you know, they shouldn't live their way that way, and I'm going to make them change, all that dark stuff. So, but sometimes, you, you know, when you're weak and you're not connected to the light, something can really grab you down, you know, seven or eight levels down into the darkness. And then it's like the things that come out of you, you're just a reflection of that field. You've just now been ported down to one of the lowest vibrational fields. And the words that will come out will be a reflection of that. And then suddenly you can, you can come back to a higher level after that's played out for a while and then have a lot of remorse. Oh my goodness, what did I say? Uh, this huge damage that's been done. Okay, I mean, that, that can happen. And I think you know, nearly everyone's had things where you're feeling quite good and someone says something and you're taken down to, you know, down into the darkness. But then, um, best not to go into the darkness because a lot of damage can be done very quickly in those fields. Uh, Twelve steps are enlightened, you know, to make amends promptly. That's enlightenment, you know, make amends promptly. You know, uh, be in a field where you can make amends, you know, look, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll, I'm going to make living amends to you and you have to uh, do the spiritual work to undo the damage that's been done uh, but uh, the, there are faster ways of doing it like the Course in Miracles, Transcendence you see, like let's say I've got a good friend in a spiritual group and I suddenly was in a really bad place and I said something really nasty to them it's going to take, you know, what, well, the best thing I can do is I've got to let go of my guilt, I've got to transcend it and disappear the story and the fear and the resentment and the guilt. And for me, the best way to make amends to that person is let everything go, let that person go and go to the highest level of light I can. Because in that light, the miraculous is possible. You know, and, and often things get miraculously healed. But I want to feel the miracles, really. Uh, or else, and I need to, 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 to undo it. For me, you know, the answer to everything is the same answer. It's like, I want to disappear my, my story of the situation and catapult myself to the light. And that light will heal all things in its radiance. So that's, that's the way to, to make amends. But the great, you know, the thing with, I mean, of course we call it special relationships. You know, and it, of course if you've got a special relationship and you've damaged that person because you've been in the darkness, it caused a lot of pain. But this was a thing, you know, and I, I shared my story on YouTube with my mum. It took five years to transcend her, so she had no effect on me. But the greatest love I can do for an individual, if I really love them, is to transcend them. It's for me to let them go completely, so that I'm in the infinite field of love and flow. That is the most love I can give them. The ego would, would, would argue tooth and nail with me, like, this is my cherished special person. I'm going to think about them and bring them up every five seconds and that's a low level of vibration. That's a very, very low vibration. You know, I'm stressed about you, I'm worried about you, I have to follow you everywhere to make sure you don't do anything wrong. That's, you know, it's like my vibration would be so low because I want to make them so special that I'm actually useless to that person. If I completely let them go so that I'm happy, joyous and free and they just see me laughing and, and miracles happening all around, that is the best thing, to let, my, let them go. If I really love someone, I, want, I should let them go. 
and they, a lot of the, the, the pain that people have is because they've made someone so special and they won't let go of making them so special. I'm going to save them by making them special. If you want to save them, let them go. Don't make them special. It's like, so how do you do that? Well, I, I did that with my mother. It's like transcend it. She can scream, shout. I'm going to let go of the idea she's my mother because that's such a special word. If, you, if you're my mother, you've got to behave in a certain way, otherwise you're bad. Well, she's not my mother. I'm wanting to let that go. I'm wanting to let go of everything. But I should, my mother is free to say, like, she hates me, she wants to kill me. That's not a problem. You know, I have no outcomes. Unconditional love. You know, uh, so total transcendence. And the th thing was that worked beyond my... I mean, I've shared it so many times. We wanted to make mega miracles. I just wanted to transcend it so there's nothing she could do or say that would affect me and that's be in peace. And the relationship turned to absolute love by being willing to let her go. You know, that's when the miracles happen, to let go of the baggage of specialness. Um, so, uh, yes, so, again, it's this thing which I live by, you know, it's always every day to hold to the highest level of consciousness I can, to be immersed in the light. And um, it's not that easy because you've got to get to a high vibration with all the special relationships you've got, with the work you've got. You've got to operate from a new level, which means you've got to let go of substantial ego payoff of control and needing to be in control to handle those situations. And once you're willing to let that go and not take that back, then these things operate at a high level. And sometimes these things, your ego, the ego doesn't like it. Sometimes certain jobs and people will leave as you transcend to a higher level. It's because at a high vibration, they no longer match you. And so it's like you have to let them go and then new, the, and then and then the universe will bring you things that will show an alignment with the higher spiritual vibration to be brought in your life. But then the ego won't like that. It's like, no, I want this special person and it has to be good with this special person. Which is then fine, then you hold on to all that stuff. You know, hold on to that stuff. And keep them being special. Keep the job being special. Keep, keep the special relationship being special. You don't have to let it go. But uh, if you're gonna, but to let it go, you have to be willing to let it go. I mean, let everything about it go. Um, but then my thing is, of course, I'd rather the miraculous handle all of life than my ego handle life. It's never done a good job. The ego hates that because you have to let go of that special investment that you've got in situations. 